So the, the first thing that I prioritize, I think is just so important, is <clears throat> so you've been feeling already that she was kind of looking for direction. And what I mean by that is she wants to kind of step to you. So most people think when I say, you know, try to be calm, they're also thinking I'm saying be small. And small is not at all what she needs. <laughs> she saw herself. So I just give her a second. If she wants to look, just let her look. Good. Now stand on this side. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And then just take a big breath. Good. Okay. So, so calm is an inner thing, but it has to be expressed out here. So you have to let her feel you. Good. Now, if you can, and this is a balance, is to think about your space, but not necessarily always through the lead rope. Good, good. Does that make sense? So when she's coming, you're often going for the lead. Yeah. And I totally get that, especially in these types of moments. Yes, that's right. So what you want to do is you just want to let her feel your space. So the challenge of this is, is that when you are in a position where, you know, especially when she's above us, yeah. but you want to get into a spot where you can let her start to, that's it, to start feeling, feeling me. Yeah. But because she's big, it's easy to do this and then grab the rein. So that actually makes us a little bit more absent. Good. So I'd like it to be that, there we go. Good. That there's a sense that she's actually feeling. So I'll step in a little bit and put my hand, there we go. And then just let her move, just let her move. Good. So try not to set it up so you're pulling. Do you see how you want to be closer? Yeah, yeah. Just let her, let her, that's it. But, but if you can, you're trying to the best of your ability to feel of your space with more intention. Good, good. And the more she can feel you out here, this, there's a confidence in my presence if I'm not just inside myself, but I'm out here. And the more I'm out here, the more she can feel me. So if you can, I would let her let, let out. Are you comfortable to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so then when she struggles, I'll just change my thought. My Good. Thought. Yes. Well, uh, yeah, sure. I'll take it. Good. But then I want, I want her to be able to experience my energy as well as, um, that's it. So now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, confining but I'm not gone now I'm also going to talk to the lead to change her thought there we go so if I touch the lead I'd like to see her thought change good good and now I'm also going to reach in and let her feel me again so then if I touch the lead I want to be talking to what she's thinking about there we go and not pulling on her physical body so then then what happens if she moves I'm going to move with her so I'm still spatial. See, I'm still, I'm still operating in my space. Good. But now when I touch the rain, good. And I'm going to let her look again because she's quite enamored by that mirror. But, and so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her see how I feel about that. Good. And then this again is now the spatial piece again, but I'm not, I'm not going to force her out of it. Good. I'm just going to be here. Good. So she can feel, feel me without it becoming more confrontational. Yeah. Because if I get big with her, then I'm going to click her back into the guarded state. So I also want, to the best of my ability, to not pull on the rein. Because if I start pulling on the rein, well, that just triggers her back into tense state. So as crazy as it seems, I want the interaction. Because the more there's interaction, the more it allows her to feel how I'm interacting. So the challenge for a lot of times people is that they're just like, get out of the space. Well, if she's just out of your space, she's no longer feeling you. But here I can also help her. There we go. Good. Now, as I step back, I'm not, I'm not really receding energetically. Okay. And now if I touch the line, watch her thought. Good. So now I start to get to the ability where I can direct and change her thought. So I touch the right. There we go. Good. And as I can start talking to her mind, I start talking to the control system. But if, I, but if I'm not able to talk to her mind, good. 
if I can't change where she's thinking, I can't calm anything. Good, and now we're gonna let her move again. So then the question is, as she's moving, can I connect my rein and watch her ear and watch her eye? Good. So I'm not saying, good, I'm not saying she has to, um, good kid. She has to think about me, but can I change what she's thinking about? Okay, so again, good. Good. Because when a horse is in an anxious state and they also have a desire or a belief that the human might not be the best deal, and I'm not saying that about you, but just about what her past thinking has been, then, then you, you can't just kind of force your way in. So that's it. You see how, like, so when you take too firm a hold, it, it puts her into a belief where she feels like you're forcing, even it, not that you are, but it puts her into that position. So if, again, what I want to do is I want to start getting to a place where if I touch this, there we go. She starts understanding I'm speaking to her state of mind. Now can I, can, now can I change the thought of the, of the ground? So she's obviously she has this thought that she might want to roll. And then the other piece is, is that when I come in here, I want her to feel, I want her to feel me. So I'm actually putting in a feel. Good. As I do that, because I want her to recognize my confidence here. That doesn't come by making her do stuff. It comes by how I am when she struggles. Now again, good. So there, the thought changed again. When a horse's mind and body are not together, there's anxiety immediately. When the mind and body come back together, there's a sense of peace. So right now, I'm not trying to make her think of me. I just want to know that if I touch it, there we go, I can change where she's thinking. And so she starts to understand that she can control me quite easily. I'm not taking control away. I want her to understand. So the two forms, so she is a mind and pressure horse. Does that make sense? Like mentally, she's scanning all the time and pressure becomes overstimulated to a point where she has to run. So if I can show her that the pressure of this can be controlled, with her, what she does mentally. So then again, watching the eye and ear, feeling when a change comes, good. Connecting to that thought. So now the pressure is actually very controllable. So again, that's it, good. Good. And every horse is different. Like I don't have actually any, this is why, um, it's sometimes a struggle for people. So I'm back into the thought. Can I have the thought, that's it. Can the thought stop pushing through my hand? Can you see how that thought's there? There we go. But if I just push her head, nothing changes in her mind. Because then you're just dealing with her physically. So then I let her move again. This is like you letting her off the line. So I'm giving her, I don't want her to feel confined. But on the same hand, I, not every environment allows for us to let her rip around. And, but it's not always helpful if that's the only way we have to do it, right? Maybe in the beginning it works, but then we want to get to a place where that's not the case. So this thought to me is much better because it's mindful. Good, honey. It's mindful, like she's, she's processing the world instead of reacting to it. So again, touching the lead, good. Looking for a thought to change, good. And then as I'm doing this, I want you to be very observant. Draw the thought that I'm, that I'm very much outside of myself. Because what, you, what was happening there is you were being quiet, but then going to the lead. So then she's not actually feeling you. And then she gets almost in trouble by the lead rope. Like this starts to hold onto her. So I want to let that go. And then recognizing, so, so just getting thought to change can happen in many ways. So there I just touched her side with it. There we go. Good. But then when I'm, I want her to feel, feel me. And I'm not saying stay out of my space. I'm saying, I got you. You see, and that's the difference. Space has been turned into this um, uh, dominance or aggression or respect concept. But most horses can't feel their people because we're all like this. We don't want to be judged or hurt or exposed or vulnerable. So we don't let our energy into our own space or out of our space, excuse me. But what she needs is she needs to know, she needs to feel me. And the more she can feel me, the safer she can be if she can sense what my heart is saying for her. 
But if it's here, she's not feeling me. So then she's going to be lost in her own thinking.